Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success and change in your club and career. We're very excited to introduce Mike Lossalot of Sagacity, Sagacity, Sagacity or Sagacity? Sagacity. Sagacity Golf. Mike's joining us here. He is a stalwart champion of the golf industry. Raised in a family of PGA professionals, he was born with a mission to give back to the game. He introduced the first electronic tee sheets to the golf courses. He connected the golf courses to wholesalers and packagers, creating regional reservation networks. He pioneered the online sales of tee time inventory on golf course websites and third-party marketplaces. He created the industry's only benchmarking report, ORCA, at Sagicity, Mike continues to help managers and owners see their course's performance in a new way. Mike, good morning. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, John. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll just uh, get right into it here. And you, I was explaining to John earlier that this green screen should ha typically have a uh, nice, uh, nice, beautiful virtual background, but I've uh, whiffed on that today somehow. So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off my webcam and uh, not distract anybody here. So let me see if I can do that. I'm gonna hit stop sharing my webcam so I go away, um, and I'll just kick right into uh, this presentation today and. Um, I look forward to uh, having any uh, any questions, any comments, any feedback. Um, like like John said in my bio, um, uh, the golf industry has been the only professional industry I've ever known in my life, and it's been the only thing that uh, uh, now three generations of my family has known. Um, um, I'm my grandfather, father. Um, and both my brothers uh, were and have been uh, members of the PG of America. Uh, so I, uh, as soon as I was uh, old enough to uh, drive a cart, uh, I was parking carts, picking the range. And as soon as I could uh, 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 look over the counter, uh, I was collecting green fees and uh, ringing in golfers uh, at the golf course where I grew up in Northern California uh, called De La Viega. So I've uh, been around the business um, my entire life. It's given me everything I have in my life. It's uh, put a roof over my head, put food on the table, put my kids through college, all, all those things. And so I'm just so passionate about trying to help um, PGA members and more broadly, the PGA of America uh, become uh, more adept at this uh, at this at this key sheet part of the business. Um, so, hopefully, the attendees today uh, are at public facilities um, or, or or you know daily fee uh, municipal resort facilities where you know where green fee um, revenue. Uh, drives, um, you know, is the engine that really drives the, the whole operation. Um, and so we're going to we're going to kind of dig in uh, to uh, one element of green fees, and that is um, annual pass and loyalty programs. Um, you know, let me kind of tell you just a little bit more about what, what we've been doing, what I've been doing, what our company Sagacity Golf has been doing. Um, we really started as uh, a benchmark platform for golf courses. We collected uh, data from the tee sheet and we uh, validated against the point of sale system and the PNL data to, to make sure we had accurate data uh, coming out of the tee sheet. And then we enabled uh, the courses that are uh, contributing the data to the benchmarking platform. We enabled the courses to uh, compare their performance to other courses in their neighborhood, and and you know what that really uh, unlocked is this whole competitive set reporting, 
and and so um, and you can really see you know how does your occupancy compare to your neighbors how does your average rate how does your rev par uh, compare and and those three you know those three uh, key performance indicators are 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 really uh, the backbone of any kind of comparative analysis uh, that you undertake and and you know being PGA golf professionals PGA and being leaders in your in your in the business um, you have relationships with your peers uh, all across the marketplace and you talk to your peers all the time and you know if it so happens that you and your friends are at courses that compete with one another you probably talk about your performance but but you don't really um you you just kind of scratch the surface and it's more anecdotal than really sharing any kind of meaningful data and what that means is is that when your owner uh, uh, or your regional manager or the city uh, council or the parks and rec director you know wants to know how your golf course compares to the market you don't have any solid data to cite other than you know the anecdotal data that you've received from your peers and so I just cannot stress uh, how important I feel it is for um, members um, and golf course operators to um, really dig into the data, uh, contribute and participate in the benchmark report because what 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 it really ultimately does, I think it elevates your your game as a manager and 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 it really um, adds to your stature when you are asked the question how are we performing how is the market performing how does that compare to other courses and um you know so so anyway that's that's kind of my uh preamble uh to this to this to this presentation today and my admonition to the education committee uh, as well as the membership committee and the employment committee uh, to really take seriously this this aspect of the golf business that in my opinion for a long time has has not gotten the attention that it deserves um, 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 by by everyone so um, you know anyway uh, I'll I'll kind of carry on a little bit more and we'll, we'll really we'll, we'll dive into uh, one element of, of 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 the data, and and that's uh, annual pass and loyalty programs. And just like, you know, just like this uh, title slide says, I mean, it did uh, generate, uh, it meant a million dollars uh, in additional revenue to to the course that we're going to talk about today, to Harris Creek. Um, there's six things we're going to go through today: uh, garbage in, garbage out. Well, you can see them here, right? We're going to talk about, you know how to how important date the data is and if you don't put it in at the beginning the correct way you're going to get garbage out um we're going to talk about this concept of day parts okay uh, um, which is important and you'll you'll hopefully you'll understand why uh the do's and don'ts of your loyalty offerings um and and and, uh, and the, the sub the sub the sub uh, heading or the, the the you know the the under the other underlying element of all of this is is getting fewer people to use the phone and getting more people to book online because when they book online uh, you collect more data more behavioral data about these people so um, and then we'll talk about some of these results that this particular golf course uh, witnessed. Uh, if you, you know, Ter Terrace Creek's been around for quite some time. Uh, it's a Ted Robinson design. Um, it's managed by OB Sports. It's owned by Pacific Life. Um, you know, they're generally doing about 75,000 rounds a year. Okay, and they're doing about four and a half million dollars in green fee revenue. And we first started working with Teharis uh, in 2015. Um, and it started with uh, getting getting the data out of their T sheets uh, and 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 analyzing it um, analyzing it uh, by day day part and by customer segment. And so we're going to walk you through the steps that we took to 
evaluate and recommend and drive some changes at, at their at their facility relative to their creek card program um, so it all starts with the t-sheet okay and if you uh, are a owner operator uh, you know what I'm talking about um, and if your uh, owner or if your uh, regional manager or if your uh, um, uh, CFO also is on their game they're going to be wanting to make sure that uh, what's in the T sheet balances against what's in the point of sale system <laughs> okay and so everybody that goes off the first T uh, gets checked in on the T sheet okay whether it's at 545 in the morning or 545 in the afternoon right bodies on the golf course equals bodies in the T sheet checked in on the T sheet the other thing about the T sheet is the right group size, the right uh, fee name, the right fee amount, um, you know, all of those things are, are super important because, you know, without them, you have no real solid foundation for which to do any kind of analysis of your T-sheet. Um, and analysis of the T-sheet doesn't come out of the point of sale system, okay? You know, you don't run a point of sale report that says we did 285 rounds today and did, you know, $8,000 in green fee revenue that, you know, you don't run that for every day of the year, every week of the year, or anything like that, right? Because what the t what the data on the, on, out of the point of sale uh, can only tell you is how many rounds of golf and what revenue you did that day. Yeah, it can say, well, we did eight senior rounds and we did, you know, 27 high school rounds and, you know, 45 member rounds and loyalty rounds, all all those categories. But what it doesn't show you, what the point of sale system does not show you, is it doesn't show you um, the hour that those rounds played. It doesn't show you the hour of the day, and and so that's why plugging in the people on the T sheet, the time they go out, with all the right data. Um, is is really the entry fee into this whole game of of data of data analysis okay so i'm gonna that's another one of my pet peeves is hammering uh, hammering this home for uh managers and operators uh do me a favor at the end of the day today uh, or tomorrow uh and look back at today and say how many people were checked in on the t-sheet and how many people were rung in through the point of sale system right if they're the same number give yourself a pat on the back and run the same report for a whole week's worth of time and if it's still close run it for a whole month if that's the case then uh you're you're well on your way but if it's not you got a problem and you got to fix it if you're going to be if you're really going to be a data-driven manager uh, uh on this on this side of the game so when you start to look at you know the data um this is this is uh through this is what an annual year of data looks like broken out week by week this is revenue for for Taharis creek and what you what you really see here is how stable uh the revenue is in southern california you guys and gals um despite you know, employment issues, despite, uh, you know, water issues, despite the cost of living, et cetera, et cetera, you still sit in the middle of the greatest golf uh, climate in the world, uh, bar none. And so you see, you know, and it shows up in the revenue, right? 20% in the first quarter, 30% in the second, 30% in the third, and 20% in the fourth quarter. Um, so, so I would, I would, I would gather. You know, you can see the dip here at Taharis Creek, uh, where they uh, closed for overseeding uh, for a week or you know so each year. So you can see that there's a dip. But other than that, um, every one of the other golf courses that 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 you're at would see revenue sim uh, similar to this. And and the same goes. And so, so this is one way to look at the data. You know, here's another way to look at the data when you when you see by the hour of the day. I talked about that earlier. 
um, 80 percent of the revenue at Harris Creek and I would guess most golf courses most public daily fee golf courses occur before 1 p.m. in the afternoon right so again um, it's really important that you know with that concentration of revenue coming in those you know real five six hours of the day um, it's a, it's it's very important that you uh, again are kind of on top of your game. You're knowing what's filling up that T sheet. You know uh, you you know how to analyze it. You know where to go to change it, etc. Um, so I'm going to show you now the next screen. Um, and so this is this is what this is this is a, a, a kind of a, a next level look at the data. Okay, <clears throat> this is what happens when you uh, take the days of the week uh, and run them in the cross and the co columns and then the hours of the day or the rows. And, and what we're looking at here, you know, those 75,000 rounds that were played or that four and a half million dollar uh, uh, green fee revenue, uh, that was generated at Teharis Creek, 72% of it was um, driven by the loyalty program. All right, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, and that was in 2015, right? That was a significant number. And what, what really started, uh, is there, are we having a issue with the audio? doesn't look like I'm getting a little feedback. Um, so, you know, looking at, uh, you know, looking at the contribution by hour, um, you know, you can see that 74% uh, of the revenue generated at uh, to Harris happened before one o'clock coming from the loyalty program. 70% of the weekend revenue came from the loyalty program. Um, so it's a, it's a, it, 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 it it was, you know, Phil Green, the, the CEO or Chief Operating Officer of OB Sports, you know, really talked about um, in, you know, when they started the loyalty program coming out of 2008 or 2009, I think it was, the, the mission was to sell as many cards as they could, drive as much occupancy as they could. And, um, you know, what happened in, you know, six or seven years is, they, it really ran uh, with unchecked growth, and you know they they'd sold <clears throat> over three thousand cards. Somebody needs to go muted. Maybe that's you, um, uh, Tom. Um, and uh, um, um, so you can see, you know, just the heavy uh impact that the loyalty card program had that 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 that's one thing but you know if you start to look at um you start to look at it in a different way here and we start to look at it by the average rate okay and so we start we started to analyze um you know that average rate uh, was 51 dollars and 27 cents you can see that down here in the lower right uh, you can see the revenue by the day of the week. You can see that um, the Friday average rate was significantly uh, lower than Saturday and Sunday. And the reason that this rate on Friday was so much lower is that, that as part of that loyalty program, you received a round of a, a rounds of golf as a, as a benefit, free rounds of golf, and you could redeem those on a Friday. And, and so you could see the huge redemption and what that did to that average rate. And you could see what it did during the hours of the day, right? I mean, you know, it's a, it's a $13 difference, but you know, here, here it's 17 bucks, here it's 19 bucks, here it's almost $23 difference just over the weekend. So, so there, you know, when I first looked at this data, I kind of, my, my, my whole sirens went off and I'm like, what is going on here? Why are you, you know, letting these free rounds re be redeemed during a peak hour of the day and a peak day of the week? 
And um, so that started kind of the process of these guys taking a look at this at this kind of level. What you see here is the public rate, the public and promotional rate. And what these rates are is, is basically your resident, non-resident rate. These are your rates that are on golf now. Um, these are the rounds of golf that are that are coming from those kind of transient sources that I'd call them, right? They're not a member, they're not a loyalty member, um, but they're, you know, they're somebody that who's you know who's who's always thinking about well am i playing to harris or am i going to play um you know arroyo or i'm going to go to you know strawberry where am i going to go play right these are the public golfers they were paying on average uh 53 dollars and 66 cents okay uh and now you know again uh looking at the, this is this is where the analysis gets very interesting is when you now introduce the competitive set okay so you know the competitive set uh is averaging 63 dollars and 64 cents okay and when you go back and compare that to the 53 dollars right it's almost 10 dollars more and when you look on those saturdays friday saturdays and sundays look at that bottom row you can just see you know, how much more that competitive set, um, uh, um, that competitive set is generating out of their uh, available green fees to that public and promotional um, category. So, so this is like, this is where when you start sharing data, now this isn't, we're not sharing, you know, raw data with any other uh, golf courses, right? Phil uh, and OB Sports have given me the authority to present this data today, but but the data that they see every week or every month in the benchmark report and the data that the other courses see, uh, even though they may choose to see, you know, uh, to Harris and Strawberry and Rancho San Joaquin in their database or in their in their benchmark report, they're not seeing individual data from any golf course. It's always blended. It's always masked. It's always anonymous. So so no by participating in the benchmark report, nobody is uh, divulging any uh, confidential proprietary information. It's all it's all protected and and blended into one into one common number. Um, so, but 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 this is really great. You know, it's really interesting when you see, you know, when you see, wow, you know, seventy percent of my business is coming from loyalty. What that's doing is that is dragging uh, down my loyalty members had so much access to the sheet that they were booking their rounds of golf and the, and the times that were left were getting sold you know in the last couple of days and they were they were they were selling for a number that was significantly lower than the competitive set okay and and here's just the sea of red you know showing how much lower it was uh, on that same kind of grid setup, on that same heat map setup, right? Thirty dollars lower on Friday, right? They're twenty-eight dollars, twenty-six dollars, right? Saturday was a little bit closer, but but you can just see um, just a sea of red here, and so that really uh, required um, them, the guys at Tejeras, to rethink what their loyalty program looked like, right? And you know, the 2015 program sold 3,800 cards. They generated $375,000 in card sales, right? So, so, so that's a two things on that. Number one, the data that we're looking at has baked in the $375,000, okay? We have the ability to take that green, that, that, that card revenue and bake it back into around those programs so you can see kind of a fully allocated average rate fully allocated revenue number um, because that's very important those are you know three hundred seventy five thousand dollars is a big number now i also realize that you know that these card programs also serve a purpose 
uh, to help cash flow for certain golf course operators. You know, they typically renew them towards the end of the year. Um, it's a it's a it's a nice uh, infusion of cash. You know, even if it's as low as sixty five or seventy thousand dollars, right? It's a it's an important piece of revenue that comes in and helps you know carry the operations through some of the winter through some of the winter weeks and and I realized that some you know it's it's frightening sometimes to want to disrupt that apple cart but um you know it's something to consider uh you know and and if you look at this you know this what what this program had um was a free birthday round a free round of purchase a free trial round right and and believe me if it's free I'll take 3 um, so I get it, right? That's what 2015 looked like. Um, you could take a cardholder plus three guests. You had advanced booking, 15-day advanced booking. Here's the, the last bullet point, this static rate. Um, you know, you can see it's kind of hard to see down here, but they're literally pack, you know, packaging a rate. They're basically saying what the rate is. And, and in today's day and age, that is an absolute no-no. Um, so um so that's what 2015 looked like um here's what 2019 looked like okay um so the price is still um pretty close to the same but the free rounds were eliminated you still got to, uh, kick in twilight an hour early you still got to bring three guests the five day the 15 day booking was notice here there are no rates published for the creek card okay with 70 percent of your business coming from one source and and that was all had a fixed rate um you were leaving massive amount of money on the table um because as you guys all know guys and gals all know um golf um is a is a perfect activity uh to uh, um have revenue management principles applied to it right it uh, a tea time uh, expires every 10 minutes you have a fixed amount every day um, once they're gone you can't get them back you have different customer groups that are willing to book and pay different rates and so you know if you are not dynamically pricing your green fee revenue and i realize a lot of municipalities don't have that luxury um, but if you're uh, not tethered to um, those kind of uh, um, statutory requirements um, you definitely should be dynamically pricing um, your 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 tea time inventory so i'm going to now uh, move to what we what we did is um, we let uh, we used we helped to Harris implement our technology, and they have uh, set up two different pricing strategies. One you can see the the second row, one for the cardholders and one for the public. And and what it did is it uh, let the um, system uh, adjust the rates up and down based on what the forecasted demand was. And you can see um, in the areas where they were uh, really anticipating the highest demand, um, they would raise the rate as much as 25%. And when you, when you did that with the public rate, you're also able to do it with the, with the cardholder categories, right? So, so even though the public rate was experiencing a 25% increase, the public the the cardholder rate was 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 being applied a 15 percent increase so so again the cardholders still had a benefit but their rate wasn't static and their rate always of course was going to be lower than the public rate um so so that's kind of the biggest mental hurdle that a golf course has to get over when they move from a fixed price to a to a dynamic price for the card holders it is convincing your loyalty members your cardholder members that that rate uh whatever they're paying even though you haven't committed to exactly what it will be uh, is always going to be less and it's going to be enough of a savings that they're going to uh see the value and 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 justify the purchase so um that was 
kind of the key to all of this is having the technology running behind the scenes that let them uh, free up um, the pricing um, uh, of the tea times so that they could move it up or down and keep it in line with the public's uh, rate. So, so when you run the same report uh, here in 20. 19, uh, you can see that uh, that 72% contribution dropped to 50 50%, right? So, so a 22 point drop in the contribution. Uh, hey, Bruce, will you mute your uh, speaker as well or your microphone? Um, there's some background noise coming in. Um, or I guess that's you, um, John, sorry. Um, so no, I'm, I am muted. Oh, interesting. So somebody, interesting. Maybe you're, are you on your phone? Interesting. The green, the green thing says you're you're on. Uh, anyway, no, well, no, my uh, my uh, uh, my desk uh, my uh, desk phone is muted, but I'm not muted through the the webinar. Oh, the computer. Okay, got it. Here, let me try and, muting myself on the webinar. Um, so anyway, you can see that in that in that uh, four year time that thank you, uh, John, thank you. In that four year time, you can see how how that 20 point drop um, uh, and where, you know, and where it uh, where it came right in the same spots that that peak hour and that peak day of the week um, and kind of as importantly you can see that there was a $15 increase in the average rate. That's a 30% increase in the average rate that the loyalty member paid. Granted, you may have priced yourself out of some of those cardholders. They may have gone in another direction and that always hurts. And you don't like to see people potentially priced out uh, of your, of your, of your venue, but but uh, here again, you know, you, you've got a fiduciary responsibility to the, your employees, your owners, your, you know, your, your team that, uh, that you need to drive, uh, you know, the revenue um, that, that provides a return and provides a capital and all, all those things. So, you know, look what happened, a 30% increase in the average rate. Notice that, you know, Friday, Friday is still lagging behind, but but the gap isn't as large as it's been in the past. All right. And here's what happened to the public and promotional rate, too. It's up 22%. Um, so you can see, you know, you can see that that it's been unlocked. The the new revenue has been unlocked through through you, you know changing the program and um and uh and and turning on the dynamic pricing uh, for for both for both uh, for both the, the loyalty business as well as the public and uh, the the public business. Um, so now you know instead of being almost thirty percent behind the average rate, they're only five percent below um, the competitive set in twenty nineteen. So just a massive change. Um, um, you know, this was in 2015, it was 15% below, and this is where it was in 2019 at 5% below. All right, you can see it just went from a sea of red uh, to, you know, uh, a, a sea of green uh, during really the most important hours of the day, uh, the, the morning hours. <clears throat> So again, when you when you look at the results over those four years, and yeah, you know this doesn't happen overnight, um, but you know that Chinese proverb that says uh, you know the longest journey begins with the first step, and so it takes some time, it takes some commitment, and in my opinion, <laughs> you know if you're a young golf professional or if you're you know looking for a way to to make your mark or to you know to to you know, improve your value 
this is the kind of stuff that you need to have a, a, a maximum a, a grasp of. I mean, you know, how much would it help your interview process if you went into an owner and said, well, you know, let me take a look at your day, day part segmentation. <laughs> let me, let's talk about your loyalty program. Let me talk about your annual pass program. You know, how are you, you know, how are you analyzing that right now? Uh, you'd probably get a bunch of blank stares coming back from you on the other side of the table, um, unless you're going to Harris Creek looking for a job. Um, you know, so, you, you know, there was a 10% occupancy growth. I mean, it's all green, right? The, 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 pro, the overall, the business grew $1.2 million, right? Despite all of that, right? There was a 22% decline in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, in the contribution or the occupancy of the loyalty program, but yet they all told, you know, they sold a thousand fewer card programs, right? They did $150,000 less in the sales of cards. Despite all of that, the loyalty program still grew by $37,000. Look at what it did to the public and promo and the group category, right? It unlocked way more access to the T-sheet. And, you know, you had a half a million dollar jump in, in, in the public in the public business. You had a, you know, almost a $600,000 jump in the group business, right? So it's just, it just, it just changed everything, changed everything. And the other thing about that, that, that 1.2, man, that all drops to the bottom line, right? There's a little added, there's a little added, um, you know, uh, head count probably, um, there's, you know, there's some staffing at different times that might change, but, you know, the occupancy grew by 10% and the rate grew by 33 and, you know, your fixed costs are pretty much all baked into this thing. So that, that $1.2 million drops, um, uh, pretty quickly to the bottom line. <clears throat> um, so here's the other thing that happened during this process. Um, in 2015, 17% uh, of the business was coming from the call center. Um, you know, the call center, you know, required a barter time. The call center um, required, um, you know, uh, more, more barter, basically, right? And so when you start to analyze that business, you can see, you know, 31% of the business was coming uh, online uh, through the, through the, the golf courses own website. You know, when you looked at the call center, um, um, and you looked at the loyalty rounds, right? 20% of the loyalty rounds were being booked through the call center. So this is crazy, right? To have your lowest, yielding uh, round of golf coming through the channel that costs you the most money to operate, okay? So um, we implemented new booking engines, we implemented a mobile app for these guys, um, and they kicked out the call center, uh, and this is, what, this is what the loyalty rounds look like here in 2019. 72% of the rounds are booked through the website or through the mobile app. And actually 70% of that 72% is mobile, is on the is on the Terrace Creek app. So that's a, you know, it just again, kind of what you're what you're trying to do amongst all of this is you're trying to um, make it easy for people to book with you directly. Um, through the channel that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, and it costs you the least amount to, you know, accept rounds through, through, this, through this online channel. That means, you know, you have to have the right pricing, you have to have the right access to the inventory, you have to have, you know, the customer known so that when Mike Lostelot logs into his to Harris Creek app, he knows that it's that that it knows that Mike's is Mike is a card holder and and it takes him you know right to the price and right to the access so there's no wasted energy in trying to book a time because that's the quickest way that you get people stop 
using an app or stop going online and picking up the phone and calling you because there's no trust in the in the system. <clears throat> This is the point about the call center bookings, right? Where the loyalty um, program, right? So 81% of the rounds booked through the call center were, were of the loyalty variety. It's crazy. So here's what's happened in 2020, right? Um, week 19 or week 10 is when COVID hit, when everybody, when California started to, you know, close, close down. And there were from week 13 to week 16, it looks like um, uh, Terrace had no business. Uh, and here's what happened after started to open up. So, so distancing started to happen. And you can see since that point, um, revenue is up. Uh, by 15%. So this is a common, this is a common uh, curve that pretty much everybody in Southern California is has experienced. Um, some could be a little pronounced more longer, they were closed longer, um, but but this is uh, what's happened through 30 weeks. Um, despite that 78% drop in revenue um, through 30 weeks, uh, you know, Terrace is only 5% behind last year's numbers here's what you know here's what's happened in 2020 um you know 17 percent revenue uh, occupancy declined a 10 percent rate growth loyalties down group of course evaporated but here again public and promo um you know those new golfers that were looking for some activity to undertake they found their way to uh to harris and you can see you know that the 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 rate category is 23% growth right so here again this is when you start doing dynamic pricing when you start letting the machine help you nudge the rate up when the demand is running hot you see what it does in these average rates and um and i think it's shocking for a lot of courses that start to do this stuff to to see you know the 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 rates that they can get on certain hours of the day and certain days of the week it's it's pretty 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 amazing uh here's the last 90 days you know when you know as summer was winding down people were still people were still playing more and more golf right um um it, So that's the uh, that's the end of my slideshow presentation, and um, you know I'm happy to take any questions and uh, uh, that anyone has. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, phenomenal stuff. There are several questions that have uh, have come in. Um, we had uh, John McNair on the uh, webcast last year, and he's the uh, uh, the CEO of um, uh, the name's escaping me. A, a small company that operates five clubs predominantly in the San Diego market, uh, JC Golf, and yes. he stressed. In public golf, when it comes to driving revenue, he said something that really resonated with us. He said that there are no home runs in terms of driving revenue. It's all about incremental base hits and getting on base and staying patient and staying diligent. Can you uh, extrapolate on that? And uh, I'm sure you agree with that. Could you? Um, kind of give us your two cents about that philosophy in terms of public golf and maximizing the tee sheet. Um, yeah, I mean, John, you know, John's a real professional. He's, he's he, he kind of like my, my, he has grown up in the game, grown up the son of a PGA golf professional. He's, uh, he became a member. I did not. Um, but, um, 
Yeah, man, that tea sheet's a living, breathing organism. And, and, and if you're not, you know, paying attention to it um, regularly, um, it's, it's, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's got, it's gonna have issues. And, um, you know, I think that the, 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 the biggest, um, you know, it, it is a, it is a series of base hits, except for when those, uh, those unicorn events come to town, right? In San Diego, when the Super Bowl comes to town, you're gonna see a pop. In Phoenix, you know, they see the waste management open each, 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 when, you know, each January, early February, you see a pop. Um, you know, those, those are, those are doubles. Uh, those are triples. Sometimes those are a home run, but again, you know, that's only for a very, very short period of time. So, um, you know, and that's why I believe so strongly in, <laughs> in the automation, uh, and frankly, our automation helping golf courses uh, grow their revenue because, because you, you, you know, you cannot manage, no human can look at the T sheet long enough and regularly enough and tweak the rates precisely enough to capture the additional opportunity that presents itself in the form of you know increased demand and and so yeah you know it's their base hits uh uh it, it's a money ball approach it's a saber metric approach but i believe um that you have to turn it over to the machine uh, to let you get the most out of it i guess that uh, you kind of answered the next question that came in uh your program auto increases tea time prices it does. Yeah, it does. We don't, we don't, we don't uh, tell a golf course and I'm putting the word tell in quotes. We don't, we don't tell a golf course that the price of the nine o'clock on Saturday should be, you know, $65 and 99 cents. What, what we do is we help the golf course. Um, we think the golf course has a, a, does a very, very good job of building your budget, building your pro forma, evaluating your local competition, coming up with your rate structure, given where you are in the pecking order. We think golf courses do a great job with that. We can help you do that. But what we do is once that base rate gets set, we then, uh, our, our automation um, gets activated and and uh, in these screens that you saw uh, before, and I'll bring one of them up here, you know, in these screens that you saw before, you see that when the when when an hour is forecasting above 100%, kick it up by 15%, kick it up by 10%, et cetera, et cetera. So we're not we're just helping the golf course nudge the rates up when the demand uh, warrants that that kind of action. And what factors are considered with the uh, uh, Saga City dynamic pricing tool? And uh, how would how how exactly does it adjust prices automatically? Well, we integrate to um, several T sheets. And um, when we when we turn on that integration, what it does is it um, for for the for times during the hours uh, that we're rec that the system will adjust. What it's doing is it's changing the rate in the T sheet in the goal in the you know so it's changing the rate and and it's also changing it on you know for whatever customer group that you want it to apply to. So, so in that, to, to answer that part of the question, we're just, you know, overriding the rate on the T-sheet um, with the new rate based on the strategy that the golf course is authorized, okay? So, so it happens automatically. Um, what factors are we using? Um, we are, we are relying, see, when we onboard your golf course, we're, we're onboarding you with um, 
three years of historical data. And, and I talked earlier on this screen about the importance of uh, the T-sheet the data, uh, garbage in, garbage out. This T-sheet data is, is what informs uh, what we call uh, demand curves. And so we build uh, customized demand curves uh, for each golf course that works with us based on their own historical uh, performance, um, you know, uh, by uh, season, by day of the week, and by hour of the day. So, so it's really a customized um, approach uh, to um, factoring, uh, to 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 actually predicting uh, what the what the forecasted demand is going to be. We call it expected pickup. You know, when you look at dynamic pricing and when you look at forecasting, you're talking about three things. How many rounds do I have currently in my hand right now on the books? How many rounds do I have booked for Saturday at nine o'clock? Uh, so that's one thing. And then, then, then the next thing is how many, based on my past history, how many more rounds will I expect to be booked between now and Saturday at nine o'clock? Well, when you combine those two numbers together, you've got your forecasted demand. OK, and when you take that forecasted demand and say, hey, well, listen, I'm sitting on 14 rounds right now. History tells me that I'm going to get, you know, 22 more. Well, that's 36 rounds of golf that I'm expecting for nine o'clock. Well, my capacity is only 28 or 24 or 32. I'm actually forecasting more demand than I have room for. And and our system knows that and uh, and and adjusts the price accordingly. Has your philosophy changed at all since uh, since COVID? Um, no, it real. I don't. I don't. That's a good. Thanks for that question. I I, I don't think it has. I think it's just been <laughs> um, more more uh, more kind of doubling down. I mean, what's what COVID has driven is a is a is twenty twenty five percent increase in demand. Okay, and and I and I've talked to I've talked to many golf course operators during these during COVID. I've been scratching my head, like they don't want you know what they did is they went into this defensive mode, and I get it. They went into we're going to just do three rates. We're going to do a morning and a midday and an afternoon rate. We're not going to change anything because we're dealing with so much other stuff, and this has changed and that has changed, and we don't want to do anything. We don't want to look like we're gouging people, et cetera, et cetera. I I, I get all of that. Uh, kinda, but but no, I think my philosophy has just been more doubled down on, you know, if you're not if you're not you know adjusting your rates, uh, you're you're leaving money on the table. Okay, those are all the questions that have come in. Mike, on behalf of the Education Committee for the SoCal PGA, want to extend our gratitude for your uh, time and sharing your expertise with us PGA members. Uh, you, obviously, you have a wealth of knowledge and uh, it's been a pleasure um, being able to, uh, to, to listen to your philosophy for the last hour. Thank you very, very much for for coming on and also thank you very much for coming on last minute as well um my pleasure john um and uh i've uh i'll put my contact information up one last time if anybody uh wants to call uh or text or email me um do not hesitate uh, happy to happy to help in whatever way i can thanks thanks for allowing me to be with you all today Out. Sir, thank you, sir. And right. for all the uh, members on this morning's webcast, want to remind everybody that uh, next Thursday we 
have uh, Eric Lohman's twin brother going to be presenting on the Catalyst with uh, Saint Street Marketing next week at 8 o'clock. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the Catalyst webinar series. Stay safe. Stay sane.